Good morning, everybody. This is Lizzie and Justin for this week's episode of Turning Towards Life. We are live here as usual on Sunday morning at 9 a.m., just past 9 a.m. And we, as usual, have a very wonderful source to read and then talk about together. If you are coming here for the first time to join us in the conversation, a very warm welcome to you. And if you are here as a regular matter of course, or maybe a kind of sporadic joining and you know us already, we're very, very delighted that you return to any of these and, and listen and be in the conversation with us. So welcome everybody and also a very, very happy new year. So between the last episode and this one, we've had a whole new year come in. So happy new year to everybody. And we have a lovely source from Justin this week which is a wonderful poem by somebody called Anthony, who is actually a person in our group, which is really wonderful. So I hope this gift of having people read your work is gonna be as I feel it when someone reads mine. So I'm quite excited about that. It makes a difference when other people read our work out loud and bring it back to us to see what we can then relearn from it, even though we apparently wrote it. So I'm very excited that that's what we're doing today. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I've just been, uh, whilst Lizzie's been saying hello, I've been uh, being uh, technical here, trying to make sure that our stream is going live, which it seems to me like it might be doing. I'm delighted to be here again. Happy New Year to all of you. This is uh, week 66, I think, of our ongoing practice, or 65. <clears throat> And it still feels nothing short of miraculous to me, Lizzie, that we're doing this and what comes from this. And I was thinking again, as I was getting ready for the call this morning, what a joy it is to come into this completely live and unrehearsed. You know that part of this is, I'm here with my cup of tea and <laughs> we're here to talk with one another in as, as real a way as we can. And, um, I keep on finding this out and it may seem really obvious to say, but there's such a gift in, a simple, straightforward and powerful gift in human beings being real with one another. And so much of um, what gets us into trouble is our attempts to kind of keep up all kinds of facades. And I'm um, I, actually, I think that's a, a big part of what Anthony's poem is bringing us this morning. It's been, um, occurring to me but the thing I want to do before we start to read is to say thank you to Anthony I want to give a, a little tiny little bit of history to this so um Lizzie of course you'll know this I started writing quite seriously about five and a half years ago <clears throat> and at the moment I've been writing a little bit less but I'm still writing um and for the first few years I wrote every day and I may start doing that again before long and in the course of my writing and publishing, I came across Anthony. I don't know if Anthony found me or I found him, but in this um, way that the online world has of allowing us to be in contact with one another, we found ourselves in one another's orbit. And I have um, loved Anthony's writing and poetry for a long time. So it was, um, it was quite a gift to be sent this and uh, Anthony offering the chance for us to read it. So. Um, as always, to all of you who are with us, if you want to find our sources, we have um, a micro website just for Turning Towards Life, which is always the address is just turningtowards.life. You can find there all of the sources each week as we read them, and also all of the historical sources, as well as recordings of all of these conversations. So it's a great place to go and check out. And <clears throat> I'm going to read first this poem by Anthony from... I'm reading actually from the site and then um, hand it over to you, Lizzie, and see where we go. So this is called, When the Holy Spirit Danced With Me in My Kitchen. The first thing I noticed was his arms, thick and hairy like a bricklayer's with a tattoo of an anchor as Churchill had. Coming for a spin, he grinned, in an accent more Geordie than Galilee, and he whirled me through tango foxtrot 
and waltz without missing a beat. You're good, I said. Thanks, he said, taking two glasses to the tap. You're not so bad yourself for someone with no sense of rhythm and two left feet. He gave me a wink. It's all in the waist. The movement has to start there or it's dead. You'll find it applies to most things, he went on, grabbing the kettle, writing, cooking, kissing, all the things you're good at or think you are. He winked again. You don't mind me asking, I said, but why are you here? I thought it was about time, he said. I mean, you've been full stretch, haven't you? What with your job, feeling like a taxi for the kids, your family living far away, and you in your head all the time, as you said to someone last week. I looked at him and nodded. Go on. I was going to. He got down some mugs. Let's say I was concerned about you. The thing is, the three of us, we like you a lot. We think you've got real potential as a human. You're kind and humorous. You're also a little scatty. We like that. By the way, that fish curry you made on Saturday was first class. You know about that. Everything you get up to, he smiled. It's nothing to panic about, really. To tell you the truth, you could do with loosening up a little. Try not beating yourself up the whole time. A little less rushing everywhere would do you good, too. I thought you might say that. Look at me, he said. I came to say, keep going and relax. Also, keep things simple. If you are doing one thing, do that thing. If you are talking with someone, listen to them. Do not blame them for being hard work. Write as if you were not afraid and love in this way too. Be patient with everyone, especially your relations who, I can assure you, think you're rather special. Make big decisions slowly and small decisions fast. Do not make bitterness your friend. Pray. I will not mind if you use made up words for this. Garrison was right. Why have good things you don't use? What you have been given to do, give yourself to it completely. And only by emptying yourself can you become full. To tell you the truth, you could do with loosening up a little. Try not beating yourself up the whole time. A little less rushing everywhere would do you good, too. I thought you might say that. Look at me, he said. I came to say, keep going and relax. Also, keep things simple. If you are doing one thing, do that thing. If you are talking with someone, listen to them. Do not blame them for being hard work. Write as if you were not afraid and love in this way too. Be patient with everyone, especially your relations, who I can assure you think you're rather special. Make big decisions slowly and small decisions fast. Do not make bitterness your friend. Pray, I will not mind if you use made up words for this. Garrison was right. Why have good things you don't use? What you have been given to do, give yourself to it completely. Only by emptying yourself can you become full. I am, um, I feel like Anthony might have written this for me. And I expect that feels true because it's also been written for everyone in one way or another. And um, <clears throat> I was thinking about this whilst I was making my um, cup of tea before we started this morning. Um, although so much, Lizzie, this, in the part that you chose to read right at the end, everything's there in it. There's this, I love the playfulness of this, and there's this moment early on which really it gets me that I want to just start by talking about where the spirit says, 
it's all in the waste. The movement has to start there or it's dead. And then you'll find out all the things that this is true for. Oh boy, it's really um, tender for me to, to read this because I know that it's true and there's something, there's such an extraordinary and beautiful possibility in finding a way to dance in life and to bring our own bodies to it. And that line about the wiggle with which we might bring ourselves into whatever we're doing reminded me that it was certainly the case for me, and I suspect it's true for many, many other people, that one of the ways that we learned to get on in the world was to be good. This was definitely my childhood narrative. Be good, be good at things. And uh, don't take up too much space. And definitely don't wiggle. Like, definitely don't. Because the moment you go down that line, you're running the risk of someone will call attention. I mean, I'll talk about me. Someone will call, someone will notice me in a way that I don't want to be noticed. I'll be singled out. I'll be laughed at or ridiculed, or I'll be told off in some way. And then my project of being the good one will all fall apart. And then I won't know what to do. Of course, when we're children, we don't think this way. So I think I sort of lived my own wiggle out of my hips. Mm. You know, for sure. So, and it's, it's a lifetime's work to find my way back into it, to practice. You know, what is every time, even though I can feel the joy and the delight in simply fully being here, every time I come up against that part of me that goes, uh uh, not that. And then I so agree with everything that Spirit says in this poem, which is what comes from it. So there's this sort of beautiful invitation here, and, and yet the part of me that I know is a part of so many of us that says, um, be ashamed of showing up too alive. Mm. Keep it in, keep it in bounds. Works uh, right against that. And then, um, so it's really moving to uh, hear this line at the end, why, why have good things you don't use? That's where it ends up. Mm. All of this juicy, gorgeous aliveness is then contained. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I don't, want it, I don't want it to sound to anyone like this is, um, like I think this is an easy thing to do, even though in one way it is an easy thing to do. But it's also really hard for so many of us. Mm. I think as well, what, what moves me about this is this invitation to inhabit. So the line that you just drew on, the why have, think, why have good things you don't use, feels to me in the context of this poem that Anthony's brought here, is a way of asking this question of ourselves around how do we how do we be the full spectrum of human that we asked to be by being born you know I, I feel like those things that you were talking about Justin in all of our childhoods we we have parts of us that kind of get sliced off because they're not very acceptable to the people around us or even ourselves our teachers our caregivers our brothers and sisters whatever and this whole development journey, I think, is a big old, fat old reclamation. And I think that's what spirit is inviting us into, which is that there's all these good things, as in the full spectrum of human experience and human emotion and action and experimentation. And we've got them. This spectrum is available to us because we're a human being. And we have this chance to inhabit all of those parts fully and really give ourselves to wherever we are. Feels to me like the invitation to live this life in the spectrum of fullness that is implicit in being a being. And it reminds me of 
I can't, I can't remember what happened, but I think I was talking about crying with someone. And at the time I was kind of working out that crying wasn't really a ex socially acceptable thing. There were all these big blocks to being able to cry as well and feeling ashamed and feeling weak and, you know, all this kind of thing. And then I remember one day, maybe I had another visit from the Holy Spirit like Anthony had in the kitchen, where I figured that if an experience is possible in my life, then maybe because it's possible, it's okay. Like I was given tears, I was given hormones, I was given good things. And I worked out that just because other people were uncomfortable with me didn't mean that I had to chop that part of myself off and never do that again and put crying to the side so that it never came back again because it wasn't okay for the people around me because it made them uncomfortable. And I think that's what I'm so enjoying about this feeling, this very gentle, poetic, dance-filled, cup of tea-filled invitation to experiment with the fullness of life, where even the washing up that I got given to do might be somewhere that I can thrive, that I can be alive, that I can engage fully with, and to bring myself in that way is another expression of living the full spectrum of human experience that surely we are bound to because we're human. We didn't, we didn't say, oh, I'm going to come to earth when we were deciding whether to be a human or not on some other level that we can't really remember. But we didn't say, I think I'm going to have a quarter of a life. And I think I'm going to have like maybe an eighth. That'll do me. I feel like, we wouldn't have come like that. We would have said, I want, and still, I think most of us would say, I want a full life. I want to live. I want to be here. And yet there's so many ways that we have patterns of kind of stifling that and not being fully present or engaged or here. And I'm feeling very inspired and invited to the conversation about presence and engagement and allowing the parts of ourselves that are wiggly as you say to to provide us with the impetus of of how to live this piece of washing up or this car journey for the seventh time to god knows where with our children or the the feeling that even in the domesticity and even in the trying to get on with relatives and having a job and all of the things that come with being a householder and a human, they, they can be infused with all of this from the wasteness that we can all be in receipt of our lives rather than slaving away at our lives and struggling through our lives. Yeah, it's a completely different story, isn't it? From um, uh, the point of life is to get through it which I think is uh, endemic in our culture. I think mostly because it sells stuff. I know I say this a lot, but it sells stuff to come at life that way because I've got to get through, so I need something else to get through and something, something else and I can never fully bring myself until I have exactly, you know, exactly the right conditions, which of course never come. So we have to learn. I mean, certainly this is such huge learning to me learn to give up waiting and learn to give up um, um, managing the way we look or managing what other people will think of us or because lots of us get really good at this managing the way I'll think about myself so you know that all the times that I don't move it's not because anybody else is saying it to me it's because of the parts of me that have so fully taken on this uh, you have to live in this in this horizon kind of narrative. And what's beautiful about um, Anthony's poem, it's and it, it, it's reflected very deeply in what you just said, Lizzie. Is that is that the place that it starts is washing the dishes and making the tea. It's where it, where it can start. And when we start to work with it that way, we find 
that it starts to make it possible for us to listen and talk to other people in a different way and to bring ourselves in more and more places more fully. So I, you know, I'm thinking about what you said about um, experience and I'm with you that a big part of this is how we manage our own experience so that I won't feel this or I won't feel that and I won't feel that. And the second part of it has to do with gifts, which is that um, we all got born into the world with stuff to bring. And the, the, the biggest, the other side of the difficulty of this sort of um, self-management and self-exclusion of so much of us that we don't want to feel and we don't, is the things that could be said that would touch people that don't get said and the art that could be made that doesn't get made and the depth that could be brought to another person and that, you know, all of that also vanishes from the world whilst we're waiting, 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 waiting. So I think this is really urgent, but I don't mean urgent in the way of like making it into another thing to beat ourselves up with, but somehow it is, it's like, when is there apart from this moment to do this? Mm. Which is why I love this last line. And I, um, it really echoes something I've been wondering about and do my best to practice as much as I can. And then forgetting is that the, the moments when um, we really get to do this are when we give ourselves completely like we have to give ourselves away really. And when I mean ourselves, I mean all of us that would have us look a particular way. Period. We have to give all of that away. And it only by emptying ourselves is when we empty ourselves that life can come in. But emptying ourselves is not, um, what did I want to say about this? It takes lots of attention to do that because the moment, at least for me, the moment I forget, blam, I'm back in, Ooh. stay really small. Mm. Yeah, I think for me, emptying ourselves, the, 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 for me, somehow this line has got linked into where Anthony talks about even when you're talking to people who I think are relatives and you give them a hard time for you know, not being what you think they should be or something. If you're talking with someone, listen to them. Do not blame them for being hard work. <laughs> yeah, for some reason I got that. It was relatives in my mind anyway. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say that. And I think I, especially over kind of in my world, Christmas and all of those kind of festive celebrations, I feel like there's a big part of me that has to empty myself to participate in a way that I actually enjoy because... Many times I'm not exactly where I would like to be for my own preferences with the people I would like to be with for my own preferences. And as you say, it takes a lot of attention for me to take away, to empty myself of the way things should be and where I should be and give myself a chance of being somewhere, which means that I have to look at my judgments on people where I give them a hard time in my mind and see what it means to go, well, and what else could I bring to the day other than this barrage of shouldness and judgment and all the ways that I think watching certain things on the telly for two hours is the terriblest thing I could do and therefore why am I even here? And, you know, people have different lives to one another and all these worlds converge over this period and I feel like my emptying has to happen in order for me to participate in other people's worlds and so in a way it's an amazing practice of just putting my own stuff to the side so that I can be somewhere and give something a chance rather than go in with the expectation or the judgment that it's going to be a certain way so I've been particularly experiencing this emptying of self and, and somehow it feels like a bit of a death because I have to let go of what my opinion is on things I have to let go of sometimes my values even sometimes I have to go well in order to be here I, I've got to and be the person I really would want to be I've got to leave some stuff behind and empty myself of the criticism that I have 
in order to participate in something and to give myself completely to a place where I am means sometimes putting even my what I believe about God aside or what I believe about like it's a really interesting one because ultimately all of this is whatever religion we have whatever house we live in whatever preferences we have in one way they're made of the important things and in another way they could get in the way of peace they could get in the way of love they could get in the way of connection they could get in the way of us having a an enjoyable life, a life that we feel like we want to be living. So I feel like this line really helps me question absolutely everything about my beliefs, my values, my what I think is important in the world and opens me up to even just the possibility of being able to be with another human being, whoever they might be. And it takes a lot of emptying to do that sometimes and to a greater or lesser degree, depending on whether the person is my preferential person to spend time with or not. And that feels like the, the big invitation. So I could also say, you know, who you have been given to, give, you to, give yourself to them completely in the context of family and relationship and being a wife to a husband who has a different set of friends to me and mm. having a, a way of crossing over boundaries that are given because of who I love and seeing how that, can invite me and shape me into a wider space that I'm not so I don't want to do that I'm not spending time with them I'm not doing this and I can feel that part of me really clearly and I know that's made of my personality and my judgments and my preferences that might not be the thing that creates a loving accepting kind way through this world I love this line be patient with everyone, especially your relations who I can assure you think you're rather special. Now, I know this is not true of every person in every situation, but, but boy, do I know this, which is um, being with people who love me, but being really attached to a story about being unlovable or unwanted or a nuisance or in the way or something, which then leads me into exactly the, my version of the thing that you're talking about, which is... I shouldn't be here, I don't want to be here, I resent being here, all of that. And the softening into, here's what I'm taking from what, what you're saying, Lizzie, as well, is um, maybe I didn't understand this situation fully. Maybe my, all my judgments that I have, that I'm so certain about, which go inwards, so I judge like I am this way, and outwards, you are this way, and then into the whole situation, I shouldn't be here, and this, all of that. That's exactly what, um, first of all, for me, stops the movement from the waist, because now I'm like, that's how it goes in me. But also, um, again and again, not meeting the moment that's here. And that's why this line, what, what you have been given to do, give it to yourself completely. And sometimes that can mean, I was thinking about what you were saying about this recent period, you know, sometimes that can mean letting go into whatever's here. You know, I'm with, these are the people I'm with, and this is what we're doing, and I'm here, and will I let myself be here? And sometimes it can mean letting myself speak up and to say something that feels really true and important that matters that otherwise I would have held away that may not be so peaceful and may not be so, but the point is not the peacefulness of it or the wildness of it or the strength of it or the softness of it. It's not, it's not that it's, will I meet this moment or will I, and this is one of the reasons I love the fact that the body is such a, central part of this whole poem is will I sense or censor my participation in this by checking out in some way, by sort of reserving the right to feel mm. resentful or afraid or self-criticism and in a sense to leave part of, to leave, even though my body is still here. It might be that sometimes leaving is the way to meet the moment, you know, physically leaving, but but the whole act of sort of leaving a vast part of ourselves out so that we won't meet this moment that's here with 
whatever it is that we have to bring and to experience it. That it seems to me what leads to checking out of a family celebration whilst you're still in it. Mm -hmm. Or staying in something that's where the life is long since left it, staying in some work or in a project or in a relationship or whatever, or, um, you know, or writing in order to please people as opposed to writing in order to say something that's true. All of those moves come from this, um, and here it is, uh, return. The, the, the thing that this whole project that you and I are up to is turning towards this return, turning back into the life that's right here. Mm. And, uh, you know, um, we have to end any minute, but it struck me also this morning after reading Anthony's poem, that the reason that this is so difficult is that very, very few of us ever got taught how to turn towards life. We got taught how to get good marks in our homework or that we were people who would never get good marks in our homework. Or, we, you know, we got taught how to, we got taught ways of fitting ourselves in rather than showing up in. Mm -hmm in so many different ways and then the learning for the rest of our lives is can i keep on turning towards life as it is and give up all the parts of me that have me show up in the way i think i'm meant to or the way i expect myself all of that mm -hmm. giving ourselves to it completely mm -hmm. that's the call also i have to say one thing really quickly justin it's reminding me of so for those of you listening, just doing one of those things they do in acting where you address the audience for a second, <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Um, in our year long program that we do, which is called the PCC, the professional, professional coaching course, we have this section and each of the students receives a year of phrase. And it's a kind of a group exercise. And it's one of those things where we're all inviting each other into living in a, deeper more expanded way probably for a year so it's like a possibility for a year for the year that we're together in the in the program anyway so just in my one of those which you may or may not remember was a year beyond like and dislike and I feel like there are certain things that stick in my development that being one of them and the other question was what is it to be undivided was a question to live with and those two things are still with me all the time and it feels like that's the conversation here is what is it to be undivided to be fully somewhere when you're there and to live a life that's beyond your preference and to be able to identify what my preference is and find a way to live beyond that because like and dislike is like a small part of our self it's like a the kind of nippy selfish this is the way i want things to be kind of thing and certainly in my life, it is anywhere I can feel the energy of it. It's like, this is what I want and I'm going to get it. And it's not the prettiest part of me and it's not the most generous part. And it's not, there's, there's of course a load of study to see what that part is and to welcome it and to see it and to be kind to it. But the beyondness of that feels like what this invitation is. How do I live beyond the the shoulds and the musts and the oughts and the smallness of my preference and my tweaky little, this is how I need things to be because that makes me feel like my sense of self-image, like you're saying, is maintained in just the way that I need it to be maintained. How do I find a different kind of identity, a different kind of inquiry that allows me to loosen my grip on those parts so that I can be wherever I am and be open and have my eyes open and not judging? myself or, or other people in that moment in that particular way mm. so i kind of just had to say that because it's really strong it's wonderful oh yeah. that's it that's it yeah can you say the, the two again the possibility and the question so it's a year beyond like and dislike and then the question was what is it to be undivided so i'm going to end by reading the last two lines of this poem again. Why have good things you don't use? What you have been given to do, give it to yourself completely only by emptying yourself. Can you become full? 
And then I want to say thank you to everyone for being with us week after week. And thank you to you, Lizzie, for being with me week after week. Such a joy to do this. Mm. And um, also look forward to the next one. Mm. Thank you, everybody. See you next week.